Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back. And today we're going to do One Piece chapter 1067 review. Let's get into it. So the title is chapter Punk Records. Let's start off with the cover page. I forget who you are again, Judge versus Caesar. And it seems like Judge forgot who Caesar is. And my guess here is that Caesar used to be Vegapunk's guy and he used to be more of an assistant to Vegapunk. So Judge didn't really know who he was. You know what I'm saying? Like, so this guy's just Vegapunk's assistant. So Caesar knows who Judge is, but Judge is like, okay, whatever. Who is this guy anyway? You know, like, and like what I was saying last chapter is that Oda was saving this panel specifically for this chapter. So that's why he put such a generic cover page in the last one so that he would do more of the Mads reunion right the mad scientists and so maybe there will be maybe this is a foreshadowing of that reunion in the future where vegapunk meets up with caesar and judge right and they form mads again i doubt they're gonna form it again but maybe they'd meet up again opening up the chapter we hear from bonnie right away asking vegapunk what happened to his head and vegapunk is like yo i cut it and this gets into vegapunk basically explaining his entire ability so let's start off with his devil fruit it is confirmed it is the nomi 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 which is the brain brain fruit and it's a real mouthful really honestly so vegapunk even stutters trying to say his own fruit name which is hilarious and so how this brain brain fruit works is that he is able to store an unlimited amount of information in his brain and the only downside to this ability is the fact that the brain keeps growing and one good thing is that it doesn't undermine Vegapunk's actual genius as he describes that he was born a genius, right? So this doesn't help him in the fact that he can figure out how to reverse engineer cool things. It helps him more on the memory side so that he can just store an unlimited amount of information and solve an unlimited amount of problems, right? So the more information he has, the more problems he can solve. And so how Vegapunk ended up getting around this ability is that he actually cut his brain into pieces. And this part with Luffy literally cracked me up. It literally cracked me up. And, and all Luffy he says is does that mean you're dumb now old guy cuz you cut your brain out <laughs> and I was like really Luffy you're the one to talk right you're a freaking idiot talking to the smartest man in the One Piece world right <laughs> And Vegapunk's like, no, you idiot, right? Like, I'm using this antenna, which is the apple on top of his head, as the connection to his actual brain, right? So it's reading in the brainwaves. Vegapunk then goes deeper into how his ability works with his other clones of himself. And it is actually confirmed that these are actual clones of Vegapunk. So he actually stores his brain in the hangar under the giant egg on Egghead. So how each of his clones actually access the same piece of information is actually interesting. So each of them connects to punk records once day to synchronize our memories and knowledge so basically the other punks can connect to this brain upload any new information that they have to that brain and you can download any information that you don't have right so any information that the other vanga punks have uploaded they can download that new information from that brain so it's just like syncing to an iCloud or any other cloud provider right let's say like Google Drive you can upload your documents and once your documents are uploaded maybe your friend can download that same document right so it's, that's just the basic idea right so they're downloading it to their local storage which is like their brain or a microchip if it's like a robot clone and so that's basically how Vegapunk is transferring the same memories to each of his selves right each of the clones Vegapunk continues on here and says since their dispositions and responsibilities are so different the wealth of their experience is that much greater right so he's basically describing like how Atlas is described as wrath and Lilith is is described as evil so these different dispositions give them a different perspective to solve different problems and thus giving them a greater depth of experience and greater wealth of experience that basically just adds to how quickly they're able to solve these things and understand these things and that's not all about vegapunk's ability he wants to make this ability even greater and have everyone in the world be able to connect to his brain so he wants everyone in the world to update punk records since that would surpass anything he could do alone basically the combination of all the brains in the world working together to accomplish multiple goals that would change the world and that's basically the inter Internet, right so Vegapunk basically is trying to invent the internet here so Jinbei sees this and he immediately sees the biggest flaw in it is what if different people have conflicting ideologies and they push these conflicting ideologies up into punk records now it'll be hard to determine what is true versus what is false so it's the common issue with the internet today is that you don't know how to verify different sources and potentially it would turn into a Wikipedia where it's all kind of unverified information 
information where kind of it's crowdsourced information. It's not the same thorough information as like a research paper, right? To have evidence backing this information. It's just going to be people on the internet updating this information. And you have to kind of find out for yourself if this is real, right? If this is true. Hearing that from Jinbei didn't change Vegapunk's mind that much as he just says, but science would never progress if you spent all day worrying about that stuff, right? So <laughs> Vegapunk is basically ignoring all the consequences of his actions. And Vegapunk seems like he's very, very much goal oriented and he's a perfectionist, right? So he very much just thinks about getting to a goal and getting that done in the most perfect and beautiful way, right? So he's purely an engineer engineer he's a genius he's a builder but he doesn't consider like yo if i create this what are the consequences of my actions and i think vegapunk over the years he's become this way because of the world government so he's turned a blind eye to what the world government has been doing this entire time so hopefully this changes for vegapunk and he starts seeing the consequences of his actions and starts to change the way he creates right and builds after this bonnie straight up just calls him out and says vegapunk you shrug off sacrifices in the name of progress right so same thing i said vegapunk just ignores all the consequences so bonnie wants to take action on this and so she pulls out her lightsaber and puts it right up to vegapunk's neck all this without knowing that that saber attracts a million bugs right that <laughs> just tons and tons of bugs and bonnie is deathly terrified of these bugs so she just ends up passing out this gets vegapunk to think about his other failures as he remembers his failure with kuma vegapunk then starts talking about his defective devil fruit that he left on punk hazard right and so luffy goes off and he's just like yo that devil fruit's awesome it's perfect it replicates kaido's ability exactly but as the community predicted we were right that vega punk is a perfectionist and would want the color to match too that's the main reason that vega punk called this devil fruit defective is because he couldn't match that color so it was cool to see that you know a community theory has been confirmed after all this time vega punk also gets into how long it took to synthesize this devil fruit and so he actually says it took 20 years studying Kaido's lineage factor and a countless amount of resources to get this done and synthesize this devil fruit. So it shows that it took him a long time to try to master this fruit and maybe he's accelerated this timeline a little bit more since we've seen the Seraphims have a few devil fruits as well. Maybe he's been able to accelerate this timeline or maybe this timeline is just for mythical Zoan devil fruit. We haven't seen any other replicated mythical Zoans beside Momo. So maybe it takes longer with these rather than the Paramecias, which he's been able to replicate, right, with giving that Jinbei Seraphim senior pink's devil fruit right so maybe that's also a synthetic one that vegapunk developed finally we learn about the legendary iron giant and vegapunk says here this legendary iron giant that attacked the holy land of mary jo about 200 years ago robin also gives us more information about what happened 200 years ago 200 years ago is also when fishman rights movement started to gain ground started to get moving around that 200 year ago time period and maybe that was due to this mac robot right so maybe this mac robot had something to do with it and so this mech robot ended up attacking Mary Joa and before it could make any real destruction and kill a bunch of people it actually ended up running out of power this again forced me to think about what this power source could be and again it has to do something with this eternal flame and I'm assuming that this is again related to Sun God Nika in some way so since Luffy has the most ridiculous power in the world maybe he's able to do something further with his devil fruit as we've seen we've only seen the start of his devil fruit right we've only seen the basic things that he can do he can grab lightning out of the air so this is luffy before he's even practiced with his awakening right he hasn't even used his awakening that much he's used it one time against kaido and that's all he knows about his awakening right so maybe there could be so so much so much more that luffy can do and we just don't know anything about it yet Vegapunk proceeds to explain and he says that the world government actually wanted to destroy this iron giant. However, the scientists at the time were so amazed and so in awe of this iron robot that they actually wanted to keep it. So they actually hid it on Egghead Island this entire time. Then we shift to Shaka Vegapunk who is basically continuing what the original Vegapunk is saying. And he's saying that I created Vega 401 based on what he learned from reverse engineering the giant robot. However, he says that he couldn't reverse engineer every single aspect of it as he couldn't replicate the power source and so this 
this got me thinking deeper into what we could use this robot for in the future and maybe if the straw hats are able to find this infinite power source maybe they will be able to use this giant robot again so maybe this robot will be helpful for getting them to the top of the red line or maybe this robot will be useful for just being on the straw hat side against the world government and i'm going as far as to say that this infinite power source is one of the most important things in the world of one piece and if the straw hats find it i think this will be the key for them to taking down the world government and potentially this is even the one piece maybe the one piece is this infinite energy source right maybe it's the eternal flame i'm holding this at really really high value here and that's why oda's bringing this up so another interesting thing that shaka vegapunk says is that it's difficult to believe that this mechanized soldier was made over 900 years ago so my question is is how is it difficult to be believe for shaka vegapunk so shaka knows as much as we do about the world in one piece potentially right so he knows about the moons he knows potentially that there's space pirates which is unconfirmed maybe he doesn't know about them so i'm wondering why it's so hard for vegapunk to picture that this robot was made 900 years ago so my guess is maybe maybe vegapunk is conjecturing that this robot actually came from the future so we know that lady toki's ability can take people into the future but what if there's an ability where they can send things into the past right so they can send objects into the past and maybe that's why they had to send a robot rather than a person into the past because their ability doesn't work on organic matter sending back people into the past maybe might screw up the past timeline too much so maybe they can only send certain objects into the past and so maybe potentially 200 years ago they came across this giant robot and they couldn't power it right so maybe the issue was power at the time so maybe now 200 years later they can figure out what that power source is and actually use this robot for what they need to and right before cp0 decided decides to pull up onto Egghead, Vegapunk actually lets us know that he has something to give to Bonnie. I'm guessing this is something to do with Kuma and potentially maybe it's Kuma's original brain. Maybe it's something to help restore Kuma's brain. That would be really cool if Vegapunk could do that for him. That would um, really ease her heart for sure. Vegapunk continues and asks Luffy if he can take him off of Egghead Island. I'm thinking that the next stop for the Straw Hats is Elbath, so it would actually be really cool to take Vegapunk to Elbath, and I wonder how how that would work with Vegapunk's brain would that antenna be able to still connect to punk records and would he still have all the knowledge that he needs from punk records so that would be very very interesting if it can work long distance so it's already like the internet to some degree and as I was saying cypher pole pulls up destroying all of Vegapunk's robots that were protecting Egghead Island and they are requesting to dock on Egghead immediately we hear from Rob Lucci and he's actually talking about Bonnie and how she served her purpose so it's time to terminate her this brings up a ton of questions about how did bonnie serve her purpose and you can only come up with a few conclusions here so bonnie's ability just de-ages you or ages you right so it makes you younger or older so the only two options i could come up with is dealing with the seraphim maybe she helped age up a few others of the seraphim so not only kuma is a little bit older than the other seraphim maybe a few other seraphim have aged up as well so potentially that's one thing Bonnie could have helped the government with and the second thing I could come up with is maybe Eam is not immortal so maybe every hundred years or so Eam has to find someone with Bonnie's ability right so with Bonnie's devil fruit and have her de-age Eam maybe Eam has never had immortality and just keeps finding this user to age her younger so that would be very very interesting if Bonnie was to make Eam younger so yeah those were the only two things I could come up with how Bonnie could have helped the government in response to Cypher Pole wanting to dock Shaka Vegapunk says tell them to hand over the Seraphim and leave we're declining the request to dock so Shaka Vegapunk knows that Cypher Pole ain't here just to return the seraphim they're here to kill himself right so they're here to kill vegapunk and so he knows that so vegapunk is ready to fight i love shaka vegapunk he's he's very straight he's the most straightforward version of vegapunk and he just says what it is and last part of the chapter in the kamabaka kingdom we see our boy kuma acting strange and he actually starts completely running off and even dragon is like talk to us kuma where do you want to go so bad right so where would kuma want to go so bad and the only place you could think of is with his daughter my guess on how this is working is since 
Kuma's brain is so messed up. Maybe he has some kind of deeper connection with his Seraphim Kuma. I'm also guessing that Seraphim Kuma is an older version, right? So it's more based off of the work with the pacifistas, right? The Seraphim is one of the earlier Seraphims. Thus, maybe that connection with Kuma is a lot deeper. Maybe Kuma was able to see that CP0 is about to take out his daughter and he can kind of sense that so he wants to go and protect her which is really really screwed up um again i hope that vegapunk fixes this in the future but yeah i just feel really bad for kuma right now you just feel bad right all right that's all i've got for this chapter let me know what you guys thought in the comments down below and i will talk to you guys later peace